Asian American social media star, advocate, and activist, one of the leading voices of Gen Z, and now ad best selling author. Bretman Rock does it all, and now the 24 year old recently published his very first book, You're That Bitch, and Other Cute Lessons About Being Unapologetically Yourself. The collection of essays and how to's meant to inspire you to be you. Coming from the king of confidence himself, Bretman Rock is here in person on set, and we are thrilled. I don't know, were you just about to? No, I was just about, I was screaming in my head. I didn't oh, want to scream, scream into the camera. You can, but you can scream out loud here. I am here in New York. Thank you so much for having me. When Kana went to Hawaii to speak to you, yes. um, you kind of teased this project. Let's take a look. I did. Well, I feel like a lot of really famous people write things. Um, and so I've been, you know, let's just say I've been journaling extra on in my book lately. That's quite a teaser. Just know I'm working on something. Why are you in my business? Girl, you'll see it. <laughs> and so here it is. And it's in the flesh now. Right? Oh my and that, that's, that wasn't that long from then to now. What, what inspired you to do this? You said a lot of people famous, a lot of famous people write, yes. but what inspired you to write this kind of book? When I graduated in high school, I started a journal out of nowhere. I don't know why I'm, I, and I would just like write, I would force myself to write something every day, whether it was what I was craving, what I dreamt the night before. I felt like it was time, finally time that I had some stories to tell. And at that point, my dad had also just had passed recently. Right. And I told, my cousin asked me like, oh, how was the Philippines? And she was cracking up while I was telling about my story about my dad. And I was like, wow, I can really talk about traumatizing things in a humorous <sighs> way. And that was kind of like my pitch to my team. I'm like, girl, if anyone's gonna talk about like traumatizing things, like mental health issues and stuff like that, being gay in America, yeah. it's you gonna be me, it yes. Yeah. Well, th this is huge. I mean, you've been on the, the cover of so many magazines, but this, uh, this means a lot to you. This is Vogue Philippines. This is Vogue what was, Philippines. What was this shoot Pride like for you? Cover. Uh, what was the shoot like life for me? Oh my gosh, I, it, you know what? Things like just feel like a fever dream that I, mm. it just had came out. I shot it three months ago, but I still don't think that's me for some reason. Mm. I feel like it's imposter syndrome in a way. Um, but how was the shoot? Oh my gosh, I, we shot it back home in the Philippines. Um, I truly didn't even know I was gonna get the cover until mm. the first day of shoot because they were, I thought it was gonna be a feature. I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be great. And um, they showed up on set and was like, oh, this is actually for the cover. Wow. In in, in the article, um, you write about recently coming out to your mom as non-binary. Yes. Um, how was that to get to this point in your journey? Well, my mom has always known I was Let's just say the third gender. Um, my mom was always known who I was, but I think I didn't feel like the need that I wanted to come out to her, but because everybody kept asking me what my pronouns were. And I was just like, oh, it's because I'm non-binary. She was like, what's that? And I was like, oh my gosh, I've got, I have to like come out as non-binary too. Oh my gosh, I already came out as gay. I gotta do this too. So. <laughs> right. You talked about Nike and shooting the the campaign, yes, and you said being seen the way I've always wanted to be in this campaign was such an honor. That's going to be an amazing thing. Thank you. We're all light, I think, and I'm, as long as you're like shining your light as with the best heart as possible, I think you're good. Mm. You talk about your family. I want to talk about your grandmother briefly, <gasps> um, because it's, the, the book starts out with that, and yes. and, and you talk to Kana about that. Um, you told us that. Uh, your grandmother, you always knew she, you were going to be famous, and you yes. told the story about walking into to Walmart and seeing yourself on the camera. But you write in the book, one magical morning before church, when I was four, she came over to me and put the tiniest amount of red blush on my cheeks. It was the very first time that makeup ever touched my skin. Yes. What kind of transformative moment was like was that for you? Oh my gosh, I don't know why I talk about it so dramatically as if my grandma <laughs> put like a full face of makeup like I have on today now. She literally just touched my face with like a blush. She went tit tit. But to me, it was like, oh my gosh, she's literally giving me my superpowers. I, it felt like she gave me my superpowers in a way. And I walked to church that day with my nose extra high and I was like, oh my God, I'm cuter than all these angels. Mm. I was the fishiest person in there. No one could tell me anything and um, I truly think, like, you know when they say, like, it's small, defining moments in your life? I think that was truly one of the most defining moments of my life. Um, I, I want to talk about the chickens. I've got, oh, to, I've got to talk about the chickens. Yes. I believe when, when Kana was there, you had 15. I did. How many do you have now? I have 51. If you come to Hawaii, by the time you reach your hotel, you'll probably have seen, like, 10 chickens on the road. They're right. everywhere. Um, and 
ever since I started making content of my chickens, all my neighbors are like, girl, come grab a chicken. And who am I to say no? Um, so I'm like, I just grab chickens from all of my neighbors and um, eventually I'm, I have 56 chickens. Just name how, as many as you can in 10 seconds. Okay, I have Kakiana, Adobo, Pigeon, Crow, Raven, Priscilla and Elvis, Frederica. I name them after I kind of like know their personalities, because you know. Sure, and yes. sometimes I don't want to be naming them Fred and then they turn out to be Frederica. And I don't want to have that problem again. Fair. Yeah, I don't want to assume genders. No, you know? don't it's assume Pride genders. Month. Absolutely not. Yeah, so Brevin, I named them you. after they crow. Thank you so much. What a lovely, thank little you. lovely conversation. And honestly, this book has some beautiful advice. So I ask you to give advice, you give a little bit of advice. But in here, reading this book, people will know who you are and in turn, maybe know a little bit more about themselves. Period. So thank you very much. Um, and You're That Bee and other cute lessons about being unapologetically yourself is now available anywhere where books are sold. Thanks so much, Brevin. Aloha. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.